before we wrap up, Millie, I wanted to talk about a post that you had yesterday, uh, or maybe in a couple, yeah, it was yesterday, actually. So you said that Mish will have been trying to hit the exits before Uniswap V4 is released because he knows Curve will be useless after that wall. It was never a great AMM. And it's only sustained thanks to an insane amount of subsidies. I feel next to no empathy for the lenders at risk. <laughs> <laughs> That's hardcore, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love his jokes, man. I saw this one and I was like, oh my God, I got to get these guys uh, on to talk about that stuff. It's going let's, to be talk, let's talk about hot because, You know what? I appreciate about it, uh, Mili. When Mili has stuff to say, he actually says it exactly like he thinks <laughs> it. He doesn't like, uh, he actually wants to get his message through. And it really made him uh, uh, along these, like, uh, Throughout these past uh, few months, maybe half a year or so, uh, one of my favorite uh, Twitter accounts, honestly, man. I really like it. Even when I disagree, I like the way you uh, you express your thoughts. I appreciate it. I mean, honestly, one thing I should say is before, like, Fudzy, the guy who uh, put the initial tweet out, he posted it in um, the SNX Discord first. And I actually, like, when I first saw it, I'm like, you know, I assume what everyone else is saying is like, um, why would... It look like why why is Mitch exiting if he's selling nine million uh, T tokens to buy Curve right like he's obviously not trying to exit he's buying more Curve but right. then you know, and I sort of you know went back and forth with him and I also said um, that like first of all like you know he was upset because he's like yo he's taking advantage of like a DeFi or whatever and I'm like he's not really taking advantage of like these lenders are like giving him this liquidity like and whoever's depositing into here is clearly like you know you know it has money uh, you know aside to put in there so like they could afford to lose some if they're you know something goes wrong like i don't see anything wrong here that's why i said i have no empathy for any lenders at risk and so i don't think it's really a big deal i don't think what mitch is doing is actually wrong either he's using taking advantage of liquidity what fudzy the point he was making and to his credit is that when he's selling tokens to buy um curve he actually has like 100 million or so 70 million or so curve um already borrowed against somewhere on these lenders right so when he buys Curve and he just, even if he moves the price by 1% on that 100 million, he gets a 1% more borrowing power. So he mm -hmm. only uses a small amount of money. Like let's say he uses 1, 1 million to buy um, tokens. He actually gets unlocks borrowing power on those. And that's why he's buying it back and he's trying to create a bid. And the more illiquid Curve is, the harder it is to do this whole death spiral. So like he also knows that too, because last time, every time like this death spiral is supposed to happen, the reason it couldn't happen is because there's no way to open a massive short and to short it down to create a cascade because it, it's not that liquid, right? Which is what right. killed Luna, really. Luna was so liquid, it literally collapsed to nothing. Whereas with Curve, you know, it's obviously not even close to the same uh, risk, not even like close to the same situation, but you just can't get a death spiral on such little liquidity. And Mitch is very smart and he knows that. So like, that's why I think, and the other thing I'll just say is like, why? You know, why? You have so much exposure to Curve. You have all these lenders you know, exposed to your curve. You have, um, like, I think he has something like mid eight figures worth of curve vesting in, in 2024. Like, why? Why do you need to buy more curve and create more risk? Like, it's irresponsible as hell. Like, why are you doing that? And it's like, to me, this doesn't make sense. But the Unit V4 thing, I truly believe in. Like, I actually think Unit V4 is going to be quite efficient. It's going to give him a huge advantage. And the reason I say that is because if you remember when Uniswap came out with the one basis, bit, the one basis point pool, because when they first launched Unity V3, there was just the 5-bit, 30-bit, and 1% pool. Um, those were the three uh, factory pools that you can make uh, for Uniswap. And then they proposed a one basis point pool. And at that time, the Curve 3 pool, the main pool on Curve, which is um, DAI, USDT, and, and, and USDC, was trading at 4 bips. So they undercut the Curve pool by 3 bips. And Curve right away came out and released, uh, had a governance proposal to turn the three pool into a one bit pool as well. So now they're on par, but for Uniswap to create another one, it's just going to, it's going to fracture liquidity for them because to create a new pool, it costs money and it, you know, fractures the liquidity between these two. And it's just a big governance process and it's a headache for them to deploy new pool, the pools. Whereas on Uni v4 now, you know, these hooks, they could just be changed. Like the fee could just be lowered ad hoc at any time. And people could just opt in to subscribe to those hooks. And so now, like, let's say Curve does governance and they lower their fee down to um, half a bit. Unity V4 could just right away, like, uh, someone could make a hook or, like, they could just adjust one hook, the main hook, down to, um, for the, for the stablecoin pools, down to um, even less than that. And they could just under keep undercutting them. And, and I think stablecoins are actually eventually going to converge on just above zero. 
like literally just above zero fees. That's where they're going to converge for stable coins, I think. And that's probably where like Curve eventually is going to tap out, right? And it's like they're, they're paying so much for this liquidity. They're paying through their um, like their tokens, and there's going to be no fees coming back to the VE Curve holders that's just to, to incentivize people to lock up. And I think that's where it's going to put a lot of pressure on Curve uh, and, you know, to compete. Now, the other thing is that like Curve, that's just a stable pool, um, pool side. Like Curve doesn't have a really good um, uh, volatile pool AMM, in my opinion. Like I use Uniswap a lot, like as an LP. I haven't used Curve since 2020 because you have to lock, you know, VE Curve, you have to lock your Curve to get the, the total boost. And it's like, you know, yeah, I could borrow against it, but like I'm not really interested against borrowing it because I've seen so many exploits uh, on the Curve LP with the Curve LP tokens. And it's like, you know, realistically, like, you know, I ha I don't know that many people that use Curve that often except for like whales and like the main uh, lenders, you know, like, so, I, you know, for for me, like Uniswap's always been more useful, right? And I've LP'd like lots of long tail assets there. I've done a lot of different things. I sold like um, tokens on like one-sided um uh, uh, AMM positions, you know, like exit kind of like a, um, a limit order. And like, you know, you can use it in so many different ways. So for me, it's always been more useful from that sense. And it's been a little bit more gas efficient as well. Actually, a lot more gas efficient than Curve. So for me, it's just like, you know, if the stable pool is what's holding Curve together right now, and if Uniswap, you know, can just keep undercutting them forever, like with, with, them, with some like, because, you know, these hooks, you don't even have to like modify one hook. You just use a new hook. So that lower. And not everyone needs to subscribe to the new hook. You know, there'll be a lot of a capital still in the larger, uh, maybe in the higher fee tier, but at least some keeps undercutting curve. And that's just going to be a problem for them. That's going to keep eating at their volume. And that's what's going to result in essentially, you know, no um, fees flowing back to VE curve for holders, which like the whole thing relies on there being demand for VE curve. And if there isn't, you know, it becomes a problem. Well, can I, can I uh, like interject here? Sure. Uh, the CRV USD fees have i think outstripped the the swap fees in the long term uh, or already yeah, they have yeah. yeah and so you know curve in the long term might just move towards sure this the swap markets are always going to be there i because i see this the curve swap markets as if, if you if you have assets they have to go somewhere right like they, they need to be they need to be sitting somewhere, right? Either they're sitting in custody in a in a centralized exchange, or you've given it to a market maker who is you know, moving them back and forth between DeFi and a centralized exchange. Or in the case of Curve, they get deposited into you can deposit a billion dollars worth of stables into a liquidity pool, and they just they just exist there, right? Like so, we we tend to see that with some of the the, the DeFi protocols that that use Curve as home, like Frax, like some of the other ones. Uh, who essentially can can keep massive amounts of their treasury there and earn a a good yield on their their assets because you know there is a a cost of holding assets and if you're not making whatever the baseline yield is for them in the case of stables it would be the the risk free rate that that treasury provides uh, or in the other volatile assets maybe it's the LSD uh, uh, fees uh, for ETH or or for other assets where there's there's borrowing fees. Uh, you know, you have to make that somewhere. And so Curve kind of just becomes the the de facto place where if if you're a protocol or if you have a large amount of capital, you can just deposit it there and get access to uh, uh, like revenue through through convex. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, uh, there's so much to unpack there. Like it's it's you know, I mean, the way I see it is like, I you know, I see Curve as like a federation as a, you know, conglomerate. There's. There's so much being built on top of it. You have you probably have like 30 or 40 protocols that are using Curve. Um, the stablecoin uh, narrative now that's coming in is is go only going to make Curve more prominent. Um, I think that the fees, yeah, I think that in general fees always kind of tend to race to, to zero, and I agree with that. That kind of makes sense. But I think that they're also making other products. You know, Curve USD is already think about it. Curve USD is already. Five hundred or six hundred thousand dollars a week, um, and they're only a billion dollars, uh, only a hundred million dollars in, in in supply. I mean, when that gets to a billion dollars, it's going to be huge. Like it could be six or seven million dollars a week in fees. They're also going to be creating a lending market, so you have that. I mean, there's just there's there, then you have the bribe markets. Like they're actually all of these protocols are submitting bribes every two weeks in the millions of dollars. And that's adding value to Curve. It's not coming from just emissions. So you have 
you have a, a and then of course there's always a, the whole the whole thing that you brought up about you know Mitch and the loans and this and that and you know I, I agree optically it's it's probably not the best thing um, but you know what as a founder what can he do I mean if he sells tokens he's a, you know he's dumping if he's if he's um, you know borrowing you know he's a scammer if he like there's no exit for him really and honestly if you think about it mathematically he really is doing the best you could do with the tokens like borrowing against the tokens so that they're locked up and they're not used so they can't be used uh, uh to short the token it's actually a smart play i mean I selling it can be borrowed against like they could borrow it right you could borrow curve his curve to short it and i don't think that's really an issue and i don't have an issue with mitch particularly but the, the way i look at it is like it doesn't make why are you buying more now like you're you know it's it's off putting for others and it's also like it's it's now you're adding risk like it doesn't you know so it's like at least I, 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 a little bit right like because yeah you know, i agree I think it, it it may not look look the, the best i agree with that but i i also feel like you know curve is sort of like this poster child for like you know it, it, this doesn't seem to happen with any of the other like you know founders and I, we see all kinds of weird um, fraudulent things happening with with other tokens and other you know protocols and you got a guy here who's got, got well is worth well over a hundred million dollars he's in the dis he's in the the telegram and discord like every day like grinding out like you know new products I just I don't think he's a bad actor um, I think he's one of the I'll smartest I'll guys we have in DeFi you know yeah. I, this guy's a mathematician, like trying to go short against Mitch is like probably the dumbest thing anybody could ever want to do. This guy probably knows where every single curve token probably is. Like he he's like a poker player. He, he yeah. knows where every he knows where every card is. I don't even Avi couldn't put even Avi Eisenberg couldn't pull it off, by the way. Yeah, yeah, like if he doesn't know, like he probably has a dashboard for like every single address with every single. Con I mean, he's not he's taking calculated, smart, scientific risks. And, you know, every time there's a death spiral conversation, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And, you know, and, and all we get is new products and more fees and more revenue. And eventually, unless unless the stablecoin narrative just disappears or what about the, the liquid staking derivatives? We keep talking about LSDs and Eigenlayer and now RSTs. These are like assets. You know, these are synthetic, same like assets, pegged assets. They're going to be huge in the coming years and so unless something else develops unless uniswap creates something that's gonna you know reform the whole lst market or you can start building on top of you know maybe the hooks does it i mean i don't know like i don't really understand the hooks completely i was reading some of the stuff you did you 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 wrote uh millie about it like yeah may maybe there's a, but i also think there's some like there's some security risks with that with the way the contracts are built um, there's, there's some issues too, with like, um, censorship. Like, I don't know how censorship resistant, it, you know, Uniswap becomes when it's now consolidated into one contract, you, you have a lot of different issues there, you know? And then of course you have the big overarching fact, which no one seems to be talking about is that there's no creative to uh, uh, value to Uniswap token at all. It's just a governance token. I mean, at least I know every two weeks when when I'm staking CRV or when I'm getting bribes, I'm actually getting bribes that are coming from another source that are not coming from emissions. So unless they do something to really reform the way the tokenomics of Uniswap plays out, it, it may go up. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't mean that it's a uh, curve is going to be a good investment. It may be that Uniswap is the better investment and it 10 X is from here. And, you know, OK, because, sorry, sorry. One, one thing I need to say here. I. I do not endorse Uni Token anyway. It's a shit coin. I would not recommend anyone touching it. And if you go back on my post initially, <laughs> I specifically was talking about the AMM. So back to Sam's point about how he's talking about like Curve USC is getting a lot of fees now. That's great. Like you know, I think that's an interesting product. But that's not the AMM, right? And no, like no. I, I think so. The Uniswap AMM to me is superior, and that's really what I was hinting at. And so when I meant in terms of irrelevance, I meant irrelevance as an AMM. And so if you yeah. even look at right now the main pools. There's only one pool that yields a lot, and that's purely through emissions, and that's the Frax pools. And that's because Frax are just, you know, is, is so active in the curve scene. And they're like the main project that pretty much is holding curve up, in my opinion, right now. Like Convex to me is like, I come, it's, it has a bunch of V curve lock, but it doesn't really do anything. Like it does nothing really valuable. It has a bribe factory, but like, you know, it, it, it doesn't really do much, add much. Like it's urine and Frax, in my opinion, that are like the interesting things that are holding curve together. 
And like, it's great that like they're it's still engaged, but like, you know, I wonder how long that ends up playing out, right? Like these bribes, like um, a lot of these bribes are coming usually from like the ruggiest protocols, right? Like the, the biggest bribes were like the Luna bribes and like, you know, it just really just allowed Luna to just blow up yeah. basically. But, but really what you don't know is like what's coming right now directly from PayPal is an onslaught of, I don't even want to use the word bribes of incentives because they're not even allowed to use the word bribes. Like they're, it's going to be huge, man. Like I'm talking to these guys and. Yeah. <laughs> but like realistically, it, it only sustains to a period, right? Like they, they don't need it forever. It's like an ongoing expense to have liquidity. And like, I think this was one other thing, like, you know, curve USD itself, it, it only like that. Sure. There's a lot of fees now, but like how long will those fees forever be? And like, what is the what are those fees coming from? They're mainly coming from uh, from what I understand, like liquidation fees. Is that is that what it is? No, uh, it's no, no, no. I got it. It's from the interest. I mean, take a look at the the, they're, the they're, interest you, rates you right now. We're, we're talking so like they'd rather pay high interest rates because there's no very very little risk of any liquidation. So when this becomes bigger, this is only a hundred million, ninety nine million right now, and it's earning five hundred thousand a week. So if this thing gets to a bill, if it doesn't get to a billion, I agree with you. It's a failure. Like if Curve USD doesn't get to a billion, it's done. Well, but remember, interest rates are cyclical with with markets and leverage. So right now it's full bull mode. Everybody wants to borrow stables. To is this bull mode? Like yeah, of course. Mode, Bitcoin Bitcoin's gone up two x in in the past year. You yeah, but two x as well too. Like well, who's going to borrow against that? Like why would I borrow at twelve percent on uh, for Curve USD? Like because why? you don't have because, because ETH and BTC it. are going to double in that time period. And what's what's ten percent when you're going to have two like two or three x asset appreciation? But, but you could do that, you know, on L LSD for like closer to zero or, or not even um, L um liquidity. Let's let's look at like even Dai. You can borrow Dai for less, right? And you can short Dai. Like I just you know for me it's. It's a you know stable coins is the toughest market by far in crypto. Creating a stable coin, it's, it's so difficult. To do. Creating a stable coin is going against the laws of physics, right? Like physics dictates that you know you cannot have a stable coin, which is why we haven't seen a purely like decentralized stable coin scale that far. And they keep adding um, almost all of them introduced USDC at one point because they need to unlock the actual dollar you know arbitrage in order to scale it because it's, it's going against the laws of physics, like. To create a stable coin, it's very difficult. So I don't think Curve is going to make a breakthrough here with their. You know, they could have made a huge breakthrough, and because there would be demand for the actual stable coin by keeping it as decentralized as possible, that is like there's actual demand for LUSD to just hold it because it's very decentralized. The demand for Dai comes from a similar place, but there's also a yield for it. And the more you add in a centralized stable coin to back it, the more the actual demand for that wrapper drops eventually, right? Because you just hold the USD itself, and so like. And if we're looking at, oh, like maybe the, the DAI doesn't have a blacklist function, USD does, USDC does, like how long is that going to really last, right? Like if it really becomes an issue, like, you know, that the whole DAI um, PSM might, that might get like blacklisted. But like that's a separate discussion. So like to me, it's like if he would have, you know, and this really might be a personal thing for me, I wish he would have at least taken a crack because Curve was in this really unique situation where the ongoing expense of incentivizing liquidity wouldn't have been a true expense because it would be an expense for a stable coin that is their own. So if they were to incentivize a ton of liquidity for ETH backed only stable coin, they, it, for any other protocol, like liquidity, they can't incentivize LUSC liquidity forever. Like it just can't, they don't even have governance, first of all. So this is relying on external uh, protocols to do it. And then even the ones that do have it, governance, they can't do it forever, but Curve was in a unique position to do it. And I sort of, I feel like, you know, he, they took the easiest route, but like it's also because they didn't have control because Frax has so much VD curve, right? Like they have this influence and they could, you know, they want to, and not just Frax, but like other, um, whatever else is backing it. Like realistically, it, I mean, it, I don't know. In my opinion, it was, it, it's, it's a stable coin. It's a good one to see if it doesn't get original, like real demand in the long term. It's just going to see the same fate at every stable coin we see out there that is just uh, collateral back. That's just going to, it, it fizzles out at some point of demand. And like, I don't know, it's it's a tricky one. And you know what? I agree with a lot of things you said. I do want the curve to succeed. I don't in any way want it to be, um, fade off. But like, particularly the AMM to me is becoming less and less interesting as the days goes on. And if, when Unity 4 comes out, I, I feel like it's going to, you know, be a pretty big hit on their um, on their AMM side of things. I, I don't know. I would take a counterpoint here to say that the long-term health of Curve is really based on the amount of projects that like subscribe into the ecosystem, right? And if you continue to have projects, like in 2023, we had Prism Finance, 
Uh, we had FFX protocol. If you keep having more of these successful projects that come in and are able to attract uh, you know, significant volumes and, and TVL into their pools, I mean, that's a net positive for Curve in the long run and Convex. Uh, and the, the idea that I would think is that, sure, you know, Frax have been the only person that had been subscribed into Convex up until 2023. And, and now we have these uh, additional protocols, which have kind of like tied themselves into Curve and Convex. And the hope would be that you continue to have players like that who, who want to be in the Curve Convex ecosystem, who want to have some for, sort of like liquid uh, wrapper for their tokens and essentially will become net buyers of CRV and CVX for the long term. So yeah, I also think, so by the way, I think that uh, Frax did it for like Frax bought the CRV and locked so much VCRV and uh, VLCVX for a reason. You know what I mean? Like uh, they knew what they were doing. Well, I mean, they that... identified they identified this nice arbitrage where they could spend one dollar of bribes exactly and, and get one more than one dollar of 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 like exactly. Of and they were very, but the but they saw that they can utilize like they could benefit so much by the infrastructure built by uh, Curve, and they were very early to uh, like spot that. And in my opinion, it's one of the things that uh, like made Frax uh, in a much better position than uh, without it. Like for me, it was a very uh, big strategic move uh, for them uh, then. And uh, and I do think that you know, uh, Curve in a way, in my opinion at least, I don't know, it, it's the heart of the federation. I I don't see any other uh, crypto protocol like DeFi protocol who's actually like. Uh, attracting and absorbing so many other uh, as a center of a specific ecosystem and like uh, I, I can't think of anything like similar uh, to it although uh, definitely Emily you bring up a lot of interesting uh, points and angles uh, here and by the way Vesto I, I did want to ask you about uh, one of Rex's uh, comments here about the collapse of the VL uh, CVX uh, bribe market if you, if you, if maybe if you have some well, thoughts on you know, I definitely think, you know, it suffered just like everything else in crypto for the last yeah. year and a half. But if you look in the last six or seven uh, epochs, you know, it's been actually climbing. And I know that, you know, uh, PayPal and Paxos and Frax are all doing things now that are going to be increasing the, uh, the, I believe that over time, there's going to be an increasing uh, bribe market. Um, in fact, if you look right now at the Prisma emissions, Prisma emissions are actually higher than curve emissions right now. Bribes technically, if, if, if everything was completely efficient right now, should be at double where they are right now. And I think over time, if you look at the Prisma side of things, they have actually increased epoch over epoch. And I think as Convex continues to acquire more uh, protocols, they're going to continue to create new bribe markets and you're going to see more and more of this. Um, one thing that I'll mention too, which I don't know anybody's really thinking about is I see Curve not, and I kind of go back to the way Sam uh, K like describes it. I don't see it as just a DEX. I see it as tools and infrastructure for the future ETH miners. Because if you think about it, the miners before, the ETH miners are really now ETH LSDs. And their main tool is Curve. And so anything, whether it be an LST or an RST now with, with Eigenlayer, or any synthetic derivative is now basically they're going to, what do they do? They go and spin up a curve pool. I haven't heard anyone say, Hey, let's go spin up a Uniswap pool so we can get up our, our, our LSD. I haven't heard that in any commentary yet. Now, maybe hooks does it. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about hooks because it's still very new and I haven't seen any implementation of it to where it may, maybe it does some fantastic thing to where it makes it more valuable for, for them to use the Uniswap decks. And I, I, I don't, I, again, I don't think it's like one or the other. Like, I definitely think both will succeed. I don't see a reason why there's not a room for Uniswap and Curve in the whole. I know there's this whole thing like where it has to be one or the other, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense either. You know, but if I see it more as like infrastructure for mining, and that's where I kind of think it, it, you know, and so that's where coming from the DEX point of view. And then on top of that, there's the Curve USD and the lending market and other things that may come out down the road. But, but from a DEX point of view, I try to consider it like the picks and shovels for the LSD markets. And as long as that becomes something big, then there should be room for curve in there somewhere. Yeah, I mean, those are fair points. I think the one thing I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about a lot of the bribes is that like, the you know, eventually those things are supposed to converge to one to one, like an efficient market, they probably will. And then the other thing is like the people that are bribing are not that exciting. Like, 
I, I understand Prisma is an interesting project. It's, it's like a li liquidy fork with LSDs. It's interesting, but like, you know, it's it's not as exciting, right? Like, I, you know, I like Yearn and I like Frax. I like what they're doing. It's, you know, very interesting projects. Aside from that, I haven't seen a lot of like other projects other than people trying to sell stable coins get involved here. Like, yeah, I, you know, you make a really good point with the um, staking derivatives. And I'm just trying to look at right now and see like where is the has the most staking derivative derivatives outside of STE and Frax. And I, I, it looks like SD and Frax are basically like their their liquidity sources are curved, which is fair enough. Um, so like you know that, that that's a good point there, but like you know realistically, it's not really paying a lot to be there right now. Even on SD ETH right now, the base APR is actually more than the curve bribe uh, curve incentives. Um, so it's like it's a tricky one, and it's and I don't know. You know what? You you guys are right. Like curve is definitely more than just AMM, and you know I think I was probably just laser focusing in on the AMM side of things when I was sort of making that tweet. Um, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how it plays out in the long term. I've always been a little bit skeptical of bribes, but because, like, they should converge to one-to-one -one eventually. But until they do, like, and, and, you know, even if they do converge to one-to-one, -one, it probably won't go lower. So there's that advantage. So it'll always either be one or above that. So, I mean, it, you know, it, I, I, you guys make some good points. I just, and, and at the end of the day, for me, I, I feel like Uniswap is a little bit more exciting from an AMM perspective. But, you know, there's obviously a curve has a lot of good things going for it as well. And by the way, Emily, how do you uh, feel about uh, the fact that uh, I think, because I personally think that, uh, again, like I, I can get your point here on, uh, on a lot of that stuff, but uh, how, how do you feel about like developments like uh, PayPal entering that, uh, like the, the incentive market, the bribe market, however, uh, however it uh, is appropriate to call it now? Because I well, think that this symbols like in a way, like much more interesting players that are uh, starting to uh, look at the space and be active on it. That's bigger than Luna, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think, think that, that would be a huge development for Curve. But again, it's like you know, especially for something like PayPal, I feel like it would event, it would converge, right? To well, um, well, to, to, morning, let me just tell you this: take a look at the, the next round. I'll tell you that. You know, I, 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 will just, I, I will tune in. But like the other thing I'll say is like, <laughs> what is Curve going to incentivize with? Like they don't have a Curve, uh, they don't have a PayPal governance token, right? Like what is PayPal going to use to incentivize? They're going to have to use P USD. I can only I'll tell you what it is. So PYUSD. Right? PYUSD. Yeah, PYUSD. Yeah, they will do that for so long, right? Like, so it's going to eventually be a come down to them to like look at what the expenses are. And as long as, you know, they're getting more bribes and they're paying, I'm sure they'll continue doing it. Um, but eventually it'll, it, you know, it'll, it, it'll become an issue. If PayPal becomes a long-term curve like subscriber, you know, that'd be a very bullish development. I will concede that hundred percent, right? Well, well they, they might be right because like let's just bring up the the fees for paypal i know this is a little bit small but like if you're trading more than a hundred or a thousand dollars worth of pyusd for another type of crypto inside of, of paypal i mean you're paying 1.45 percent that seems like quite a lot uh it's even more if you're trading less than that uh and so people naturally well, realize that this was like this yeah now that you're showing it to me <laughs> yeah i'm sorry this is so small it, it's a it is uh, a little bit, but the the fee above a thousand dollars is like a percent and a half. That's quite large. Uh, or if you take the PYUSD off platform into the crypto ecosystem, now you can just use one of the aggregators or swap through Curve or uh, use that. That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah. a big deal. And you know, we we are seeing more protocols that are going to be launching through Convex. Uh, we had Curve Ants uh, that came on the show at the beginning of the year, uh, and they have talked about uh, what they're going to do. I, I'm sure they'll be integrated with with Curve and Convex as well too, as they're going to be this like cross chain aggregator for for all of DeFi, omni chain money market. Um, so there, I think there are more, yeah, more about protocols, right? Getting locked into FXS, getting locked into Convex. Yeah. Uh, if the frax chain thing happens. Yeah, I, I think of I think of like Curve is more of like a social system for for DeFi protocols. And yeah. so as long as as long as Curve can continue to inspire people to want to come and join the system, then it has long term growth. Right. It's it's like an it's like a DeFi aggregator for liquidity and, and uh, money markets. But you know what? I'm also interested to see what happens with Uniswap. I mean, it, 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 the technology sure. is technology. There could be something that it completely unlocks, you know, and well, we the, know it, it all comes down to I, at the end of the day, I think it all comes down to like this this idea of if you if you're a large asset holder. What, what do you do with your assets, right? Like where are those assets going to sit? Because there's a, like a, a default base cost of carry for, for any asset that you have, whether it's stable right. coins, you know, the, that, that carry rate is the, the risk-free rate. If you have Bitcoin or ETH, it's either the, uh, the base borrowing rate or the, uh, the LSD rate. 
And so with, with any of these, you have to make a strategic decision of, okay, where, where am I going to ha house these assets while I'm custodying them? And so for some people, the, the idea with, with Curve would be like, okay, I can just deposit them in Curve and take part in the Curve ecosystem. With Uniswap, it's becoming more of this, this question of like, okay, I can put them into, into Uniswap. I can have these complex uh, concentrated AMM positions. Or with Uniswap before, if I'm a market maker, I can essentially keep my assets in a centralized exchange somewhere and then just uh, like fill orders that come through Uniswap X. And so the Uniswap is just offering different, uh, different ways to custody assets uh, inside of a, a, a market making facility uh, so that different actors can, can take part. And so it's it's just a different system than what yeah. Curve offers. It's just a, like a different flavor. Like, like if you're a market true. maker and you're you're having assets, you can you can use Uniswap X to keep assets inside a centralized exchange and then just fire off orders once once they appear, right? Like you can just fill the order straight right. from from a centralized exchange. So now you can engage in like on uh, centralized exchange market making and fill DeFi orders at the same time, which is kind of like a very novel and interesting like growth. Uh, story for Uniswap as we go into this next uh, couple of years. Totally agree. One, well, one thing I would say is that you know you could definitely see how like Mitch is you know he built a whole like uh, like empire around him that like sort of keeps the curve going and that's like you know I, I commend that a lot like you know it's interesting and you know whatever differences I might have uh, in opinions I I, I think that it, that is impressive um, like you know realistically like. Uh, you know, you guys are right. Curve is bigger than than, than uh, just the AMM, but um, you know, it, I'm just curious to see how it ends up playing out. Like, it really depends on there just being demand to continue locking up Curve um, in the long term. So, it'll, you know, it, markets eventually become efficient, but they could stay uh, uh, inefficient for a long time. And then the other thing I I just wanted to say is that like, I just wish that you know he would be a little bit more responsible with the token. Then in this case, like, because it just like the protocol relies so much on these uh, the, the token emissions, like. You know, maybe it would be wise for him to be, you know, deleverage a little bit. Like, you know, I, I, that's what I would think. Like, yeah, I, you know, and then the day, like, uh, I'm just curious to see how it plays out. Like, I do understand that silo was basically meant to um, facilitate borrows against Curve USD. Uh, the silo, like the 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 one, uh, yeah, the Obama edition or whatever. So, mm -hmm. you know, I I would like to see uh, maybe Mitch like tone it down with a little bit on on the risk side of things to maybe increase the health of the ecosystem. But, you know, I mean, in, in the end of the day, I think, you know, my long-term thesis is that, like, it's it's going to be difficult to maintain an efficiency for an extended amount of time. So PayPal USD is an interesting one. That is one where, like, there's real demand for a PayPal stablecoin, perhaps, because people can redeem it. But, if, and, like, you know, it's, it's yet to be seen, like, in the long term how that ends up playing out, I guess. Uh, so I did want to bring up this tweet uh, in response to your diversification calls. So uh, Bill Gates met with uh, Warren Buffett many years back. <laughs> And uh, got him to diversify out. So today, Bill Gates is only worth about $138 billion. And he, if he hadn't sold any of his Microsoft stock, he'd be worth $1.3 trillion today. Yeah. Maybe Buffett <laughs> just didn't want him to be richer than him. <laughs> no? He saw it coming, man. That's Buffett. He wouldn't. Uh, like, I don't know. Sometimes diversification is bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> Concentrated yeah. bets, right? Concentrated yeah, and bets. I think he knew it. I think he knew it when he told... Uh, uh, Bill Gates to uh, to diversify because he didn't want uh, Bill Gates to become uh, richer than him. You know? Yeah, he was just trying to keep him down, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, game, uh, this game is played uh, with some rules, you know. Uh, well, that, we'll end it there. Uh, we went a little bit longer than usual, but I think the discussion was really good. Millie, uh, by the uh, way, I just want to show one more thing, uh, Sam, if uh, you can, because uh, especially when we talked about uh, yeah, sure, like with uh, Gary Gensler at uh, the end. Did you do you see this tweet that I'm sending that I sent now from uh, Tommy G? Oh yeah, Tommy sure. Genesis? Uh, he was. Uh, 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 even for, even forget the, the specific CLV uh, like <laughs> like I'm just saying that uh, you know what the SEC as much as they're in the, like as much as they're warning us about uh, and protecting us from uh, our FOMO, uh, they're also uh, like uh, we should be also protected by their FUD. I think he's just raising <laughs> a good point. Maybe one day, DeFi advisor. Maybe one day. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Good debate, uh, Millie. Um, definitely, I want to hit you up uh, on Twitter, on um, on Telegram. Definitely, man. I, I appreciate for bringing me out. This was actually a really fun discussion. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, great. Yeah. Thanks, thanks both of you for coming uh, at such short notice. Really appreciate it. And honestly, I think Sam uh, is right. Like, uh, this was a great uh, discussion. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and YouTube to watch our streams every single day. And then also we have this- Every amazing- single day, gentlemen. Every single day. By the way, Sam, we're approaching uh, 1,000 subscribers, I see, on- uh, On YouTube, yeah. On nice. YouTube, almost, almost. Really good. Yeah. Uh, and great, then, great job, guys. Yeah. So uh, thank you for everybody for subscribing. We'll be back tomorrow and go enjoy your day. Hopefully we get a spot of ETF approval today. Yep. Oh no, wow, wow, wow. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care. Have a good one. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.